All right, today we're doing a oil change for a 2012 Honda Civic. What you're going to need is one of these pans. You're going to need a little screwdriver like this. Um, you're going to need an 11 16 socket and wrench. So this piece is going to be 11 16 and you're going to have a socket like this. You're going to get underneath the car and there's going to be a little metal panel uh, that's going to drop down and you're going to have to take out four screws and those four little screws look like this. They're flat and they've got just a little thread on them and those four screws hold up that little metal panel and once that drops down you're going to expose all this stuff up here and that's where your oil is going to drain from. You're going to drain your oil from this spot right here and it'll actually say engine oil on it. This side over here, which is your driver's side, that's the passenger side, you can take a little plug off over here and it's usually square. Um, it almost will fit or sometimes will fit with a socket wrench without any of the, uh, the attachments. That little square that your socket's attached to will fit right inside that and you can drain your um, transmission fluid on this side. Just make sure you don't drain your transmission fluid thinking you're draining your oil and then add oil because then you're going to overfill your tank and you could screw things up. So make sure it says engine oil and it's on the passenger side of the car after you drop that metal panel. Um, and then this is going to be an 11 16 socket and I've already got mine pre uh, pre loosened because I can't hold the phone and do it at the same time. So what you want to do is when you get under here you want to put your pan underneath an area, especially if it's windy, make sure that you don't take it all off at once because the wind will just blow the oil around and shit. So what you want to do is just take this off lightly and once you get it to start to drip, which you'll notice it will, and at first, when you first do take this off, it's going to shoot a little bit, so you're going to want to make sure this is further back. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to line that up and you can put something down underneath too in case you don't want to get oil in your driveway or whatever but what you're going to do is loosen that up all right and then if you can let it drip a little bit and I'm kind of missing the pan a little bit so I got to pull this forward a little I would normally lift this pan up to it until it slows down a little bit, but I'm just going to pull this out and let it go because I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. So what I'm going to do is just let it go, and it's pouring right into that now, you can see. And as it starts to slow down, you might have to drag this pan a little closer because that stream is going to start to drop straight down rather than going out. Right now, there's about five quarts of oil in there, and it's shooting out. Uh, maybe a little less than five quarts. I think this actually only holds four quarts of oil. They say three nine, but I just put four to make sure. Anyway, um, so you don't want to put all five quarts in when you drain this. You don't want to buy a five quart jug and put in five quarts because you're actually going to add a quart over what it recommends. So now that that's draining a little bit slower, I can pull this closer until it's even underneath it. So even when it does start to drop straight down, it's still going to catch it. So that's starting to slow down quite a bit now. And what you're going to do is right here now, you've got your oil filter. You're going to unscrew that to the left. And when that comes off, that's going to have oil come out too. So let this drain for the most part until you don't see any stream coming out of it or a very steady, just tiny drip. And then what we're going to do is plug that back up real quick because you're going to want to move your pan over to this while this comes off that's going to drop some oil not a, not a lot not as much as that but you don't want to get that on the driveway either so and if you can't get this off by hand sometimes i put it on with uh some channel locks you want to grab a set of channel locks and kind of come from the back here and just loosen it a little bit to the left and then that'll pop right off and what we're going to use for a 2012 honda civic is your mobile if you want you can use other brands but I use mobile mobile one extended performance because my car has 150,000 miles on it um, because I travel 
about 30,000 miles a year. So I have quite a few miles on mine for 2012. Your average should probably be about 75,000 for 2012, and mine's about a 150. So I'm putting on twice the mileage as most people. Anyway, 0W20, full synthetic, and then your filter is going to be uh, 7317, and it's got up to a 20,000 mile protection. I would not go 20,000 miles. That's just my preference. They do make one year uh, or 20,000 mile oil. I wouldn't go that long because I don't know if I trust it yet. But going eight, 9,000 miles on an oil change is pretty good considering if you use standard oil, you're doing it every 3,000 miles. So you're still getting almost triple by going 9,000 miles. You're getting an almost triple with full synthetic. And this is definitely going to protect uh, because it can go up to 20,000 miles. So don't get your junky filter. Just get a nice filter you know you're going to have. It's going to uh, do the job. Uh, this costs about $26. This costs about $9. With tax, it came to like, I don't know, just under 40 bucks. Um, do it yourself. If you go to Valvoline or any of these other places, it's going to charge you $90. You do it yourself. It's very easy. All you need is an 11 16 uh, a socket wrench, a little tub like that. And if you got these little plastic things, they're maybe 30 40 bucks. You buy them once and you can use them for the life of your vehicle or the life of your, you and use them for all vehicles. So they're pretty sturdy. They're hard plastic. Uh, you know, it's going to hold the weight of a car. I don't know about a truck, but at least a car. Uh, and that's pretty much completely drained right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this plug and we're going to put that back in its place. And once that's back in, you might get a little oil on your hands. Uh, I did have a glove on, but I can't operate a phone and have a glove on at the same time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a set of channel locks. And I'm probably going to need a bigger set than that pair. So we're going to come over to my toolbox, we're going to grab a set of channel locks like these and we're going to open them pretty far, probably all the way up to grab this because it's pretty thick. So once we get back under this car, it might be kind of hard for me to, you're going to want to put these channel locks on that filter. You can't really see the filter but it's right there, now you can see it, that's the filter right there. So once we break that free with the channel locks, if you can't do it by hand, uh, that's going to screw off to the left. And all you're going to do is once you put that back on, uh, take this off, put a new one back on, tighten that bolt back up, then you go back up to the top of the car and you fill the oil and you're done. And then all you have to do is put that metal pan back on with its four screws sitting right there. And drive the car off the ramp and you've got a full oil change.